All right, how's everybody doing today? This is your boy Steve at Vast Motorsports, and today I'm going to be starting the rebuild or restoration on my good old Stingray. This is a 87 model Stingray 207 XLS Cuddy Cabin, and I love this old boat. I've had this boat longer than any other boat that I own. I've had this one about 17, maybe 18 years, and I consider this to be my first real boat because back when I was 21, I had a boat and it was just a smaller 17 or 18 foot, had a 85 horse Johnson outboard on it. And I switched that outboard motor between three different boats over six years time. Uh, so the motor, matter of fact, I still have the motor till this day. I haven't started it in many, many years. Maybe we'll do that in another video. But this particular boat here has a 350 Merc Cruiser in it, and it'll run in the 50 mile an hour range, and it's pretty quick. So it surprises a lot of people. It's hard to find these older classic bodies where they're still in good shape, and I've definitely taken care of it, but it was stuck in Hurricane Ian last season, and it did some damage to it. So that's what this video is going to be. We're going to be fixing all those issues that the hurricane caused. Thank God it's not a lot worse. And thank God that I even have the boat still because it could have floated away and been gone because the RV park where I kept it down there was completely flooded in eight foot of water and a heck of a current, a lot of wind, 150 mile an hour winds. So I'm lucky that when I went back down there that it was actually still in the park there where I could save it. So let me show you the boat here. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my amp off the back of the seat here and I've got a couple brackets that are holding this bottom, the uh, speaker box slash seat base in. So let's get those out so I can remove this assembly. Back there. I think the speaker's still good. I'll have to hook it up to an amp and make sure it sounds good before I actually put it back in here. I got some test equipment set up in the shop I can test it with. So I got the seat base out. Now I'm going to take these two lower panels out. I cleaned all my stuff out of here. And I'm going to take these trim rings off. And the cooler here, go ahead and get these trim rings off. And that way I can go ahead and pull my carpet up. That was pretty crazy because right after uh, last season when I, or a couple seasons ago when I redone my interior, I bought the little GPS here used off somebody. I only gave like a hundred bucks for it and it's awesome because it's got all the maps loaded in it. Even when I went down to Florida on the intercoastal, it had the intercoastal waterways with all the markers and stuff, channel markers. So that's very nice because that's an expensive program. And I ordered one of the little low rents covers for it to keep it protected but the wind blew it off one time and I never knew what happened to it and when I just removed the panel here it is so that was a cool little surprise for me <laughs> who would have known I mean I looked everywhere I just I thought I looked back in that area but I guess I didn't look far enough behind it Pretty much got everything stripped out that I need to to be able to remove the carpet now. But I'm going to go grab my vacuum and I'm going to vacuum all this out because I don't want any of the leaves getting back here into my bilge area. I actually need to go ahead and vacuum all this out too because I do not like leaves getting in the bilge. Right now the bilge is still nice and clean. I usually try to keep it clean. I like my motors and builds and everything like that looking good and clean, but I can't help what's gotten in here because of the hurricane storm. So I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum everything out before I pull the carpet up. All right, got it cleaned up. 
Got everything stripped. Got the door off and stuff. So now I'm starting to pull the carpet back. Okay, okay, yeah, I know I'm going to catch a bunch of flack. Let's hear it in the comments, how I did it all wrong. But, this is the original floor in the boat, and it's not that it's not solid. I can walk around on it, everything is good. What happened, though, is where the seats were, they just kept ripping out of this original floor. And... I probably could have fixed something there, but back here in the very middle, it had a little bit of weak spot right in this area. But this is actually under the back bench seat pad and under the base of the back seat, so I really wasn't worried about it. It's right here at the back, right above the gas tank. So I didn't cut any of it out. I just laid wood in over it. And this was done, I did this probably seven, eight years ago. And then I took fiberglass with the mat and the resin and I laid it in on top of everything. But what happened was, uh, I guess over the years, there was about three, four year period there. I got to where, excuse me, I didn't use the boat because I got into other bigger boats with bigger cabins because I like staying overnight at the lake. And then I got the cabin cruiser over there because I like staying for a week at a time if I want to on that. Me and the wife would take that to Florida to the Gulf Coast intercoastal waterways and stay for a week at a time on it with the full bedroom and bathroom and kitchen and all on it. So anyway, point is I didn't use it for a long time there. A few years. The tarp and all had gotten ripped and I wasn't putting tarps on it like I should back then. I didn't care about it as much. And... Uh, the water over the years, I guess it sunk in, soaked in around the actual bolt holes of the seat pedestals, and it ruined that plywood that I'd put in, even though it was fiberglassed over. It must have, like I said, went in around the actual. All right, so I got my packs of fiberglass, got my resin and my hardener, stir stick, some gloves. It's good to have some gloves. I got my uh, respirator and a old brush I'm going to use and I made up a little tray here because whatever you mix the resin in it ruins it and uh, some of them come with the lid on the top I, this is an old one I had the other newer one is in there with the lid I don't want to use it yet and uh, so anyway I just put some foil in a box make up a little tray it's pretty deep you don't want to mix too much resin at one time because it dries very quickly uh, just took some putty and filled in the crack here and build it up a little because I don't want to see there was a little ridge here where the two pieces met and I don't want to see that under the carpet so I did that to smooth it out now when I lay the fiberglass and the sheets on top it'll be fine uh, you won't see anything when I put the carpet in so I'm about to mix it up probably won't video any of this because there's not much to really see I'm just going to start over there brush everything wet for a certain area as big as one of these sheets they're like one foot wide two foot long uh four foot long i think i have to measure it again something like that so anyway it might be two foot by four foot so i'm gonna wet all that lay the mat down and then come back with the brush over it soak it real good with the resin and i'm gonna run the resin up the wall a little bit i have the carpet loose so i can pick it up 
run it up through there and run the resin up this wall a little that way no water can get in and soak into the edges of the wood along through here where the locker area and the cooler I'm gonna run the uh, take the brush and brush all around the inside there again so water cannot seep in all right so I did this whole section here you can't even hardly see the mat and I did that section over there and I went up the walls a little bit so now I still have to come back through here all in the center section and do a strip across all this where the two pieces join because it actually stopped right over here on that uh, mat there all right so I got that stupid nasty job done I hate working with the fiberglass but I can get it done at least so everything is coated and it overlaps onto this piece pretty far same with up front there so now we're just going to let it dry overnight be able to clean all this stuff out and be putting the carpet in soon all right so i got it all glassed in and it dried overnight got the holes trimmed out here where i want them and i coated all the edges of the wood all the way down painted on the resin with the brush to make sure it's all sealed and I'm going to try to reuse the old carpet because really nothing was wrong with the carpet. So let me get her laid in here and uh, make sure everything still fits good. And then I'll fold it back half at a time and start putting the glue down. I went ahead and used the Ultra Bond 420. Pick that up at Lowe's. That's what I used on the bass boat. Had some left over. Just used a little trawl style scraper laid the glue down actually I did this half first so I could make sure the carpet was lined up good and then I went ahead and come down this whole side of the half the boat here uh, just spread it out as good as I could the carpet and pushed it down and I went around walking on it everywhere and pushing it down nice and tight peeled this side over this way put the glue on that whole half and in these areas here and then laid the carpet out stuck it under that side carpet just a little bit pushed it out got all the bubbles out and then went around walking on it so uh, I think we're good to go there all this on the sides will get covered by the little side panels that bolt on here that match these so uh, we're looking good so far looking good all right, so I've got everything installed as far as the side trim and stuff, and the only thing I gotta do is put in my two seat bases, but I'm actually spraying those with paint because they were getting a little chipped up. I just want them to look good. So anyway, all the trim is in, the door and all is back on, and the trim around the, the door jam. Uh, like I said, panels and all are on. I just gotta put my back seat base in, which is no big deal. So uh, I was just going to finish out the video of the floor job, and I know I'm going to catch a bunch of flack from some people, I'm sure. Let's hear the comments, y'all. Is it good enough? Would you have done it a different way? Would you have tore it all the way down and done stringers and blah, blah, blah? And I don't want to get into all that with this uh, because the floor, like I said, is very solid. And even the floor under this, as you can see, all I did was I did an overlay and the subfloor under it the original floor was still more or less solid when you walked on it the biggest thing was where the seat pedestals were they kept ripping out so it did have some rot to it but i didn't want to take it all out and like i said the stringers feel good in it i can't jam a screwdriver or anything through them uh down in the floor here even in here it's pretty solid still i can walk in there i just had the carpet covered with this cardboard because I didn't want to get uh, the fiberglass resin dripping down in there like it dripped onto the cardboard but again even in here <clears throat> I can step in there and it's still nice and solid I can kick the stringers I could take a screwdriver and pop them so I'm not real worried about that I just used uh, exterior sheeting plywood 
and then as you can see everything is fiberglassed over with at least just one layer it's really not for the strength as much as to keep it waterproofed and water sealed so if it gets stuck in the rain or when you're jumping in and out and you're wet um, or you want to wash the boat pretty much the fiberglass runs up the sides a little onto the original fiberglass to where you can take a hose and wash everything it's not getting into the actual wood it's just going across the fiberglass and into the back of the boat and out the into the bilge and out the plug hole or pump whatever but uh yeah that's my quickie more or less floor job so anyway stick around folks for the next video that's going to be in this uh playlist i'm about to get on the starter i got the brand new starter here and i'm going to do the starter alternator and the trim pump solenoid uh both the solenoids on there and fix the wiring so we will have the stingray back out on the water soon y'all stay tuned